What's up, mate? Mate, I'm trying to get on UK Netflix, right, to watch something, but it won't let me, because we're in Australia. Have you tried Surfshark? No, what's Surfshark? <laughs> Surfshark is a VPN that allows you to access any website from any place in the world. So you can go on iPlayer and say that you're in England and it'll let you get on access to all of the things that you want to watch on, on uh, the internet. So I could go and watch my favourite shows mm -hmm. in different countries even yeah. though I'm not in that country. Yeah, well, we're on tour, yep. but you still want to watch you know, Downton Abbey. You, you just set your, set your location to UK and then you can watch whatever you want. What about your security and all that? Though? Because when you use these types of things, yeah. I'm always worried people are going to get into my files, going to get into my system. I can't be having that. Well, Surfshark it encrypts everything. Right, so no one can get into your stuff. It makes you more secure, and it also has antivirus as well. So no one can get into anything. No one can access any of your files. It's perfect. Sounds a bit expensive, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Now, well, you would assume so, wouldn't you? Yeah. It, it does so much. It covers everything. Yeah. But actually, you gain eighty-three percent off and your first three months free if you use the code Paddock. The code Paddock. Yeah. Use the code Paddock for eighty-three percent off and three months free with Surfshark. Access anything, anywhere, anytime. Cold paddock, 83% off. Access anything, security tip top. What more can you want? Click here, look. Ah. Nice. Jay of Stratford Paddock, this is the paper talk. As you can see, I'm in Melbourne and actually it's a bit freezing that's why I've got my parker my huddler's parker on but don't worry I've heard in Manchester it's nice and sunny so I'm not jealous at all mm, sort of anyway let's get straight into it loads of stories to get through obviously we've got the Frankie de Jong saga update because we're in a full-blown saga now aren't we it's almost Jade and Sancho levels of saganess if that's a word, I don't think it is, but you know what I mean. Uh, we'll also have a little bit on Lissandro Martinez. We'll give you an update on some of the other players as well on the tour. What's happening with Jimmy Garner, who hasn't played yet. And some quotes as well, because some of the players have been speaking to the media. So we'll have some quotes and updates on that front as well. Um, right, first of all, let's start with Lissandro Martinez. Uh, the latest news as we stand, I mean, it may well change by the time you're even watching this. It may well have changed. changed. It says that United are poised to... Um, confirm Lissandro Martinez um, as their latest signing but an announcement may not take place until early next week so we're almost there but we're not quite there yet a few papers are reporting this I think I've seen this in the Express it says that according uh, they're quoting the Evening News as well so there you go it's in every paper uh, according to the Evening News the Ajax defender is in Manchester for his official uh, sorry for his medical and will complete a £46 million switch to Old Trafford uh, Martinez will sign a five year contract of wages of around £120,000 pound per week uh, and follows Tyrell Molassia and Christian Eriksen in joining Eric Ten Hag's side. So those are the three signings that are, well, two of them are done. One of them is almost there. Molassia, Christian Eriksen and now Lissandro Martinez. So that's the... Um, the update from the evening news or from sorry from the express saying that it could be early next week there's other sort of rumors doing the rounds that we could have a, an announcement soon as soon as we get an official Lissandro Martinez announcement we will let you know we will go live we will give you an update we'll be all over the socials so whether it's early next week whether it's today whatever the case may be because let's face it next week could be tomorrow is is tomorrow so we'll always let you know on that one but it's it's pretty much a done deal in it there's no sort of there shouldn't be any dramas there so that's Ericsson Molassi and Lissandro Miners. Obviously, though, we need new signings and uh, more signings, sorry. And the, the, the big signing that has been doing the rounds and that we're obviously in for and that everyone wants to see come, most of the people that I've seen speaking about on socials anyway and from chatting to fans here in Melbourne, has been Frankie de Jong. We were speaking to Jamie Jackson about that one, of course, on the one-on-one -on -one interview we did with him here in Melbourne. If you've not done so, go and check that out. Um, an update here as well, uh, I think this comes from the Daily Mirror, um, saying that Eric Ten Hag has told the board, uh, the club's hierarchy, to keep pressing ahead for the signing of Frankie de Jong. Uh, the Barcelona midfielder, according to these reports anyway, is reluctant to leave the new camp, uh, even though his current club want to sell him. A fee of around 72 million quid has been uh, agreed between the two clubs. A Ten Hag a uh, apparently keen for the board to continue pushing to get the move done, even if it takes a little while. They, he wants that move to happen. He's not bothered or he's not, you know, he's, that's not going to put him off if it's going to take a few more weeks or however long it takes. He just wants it to be done. Now, the issue hasn't been about Frankie de Jong coming to Old Trafford. I know there's reports that he wants to stay at uh, Barcelona, but if he didn't want to come to Old Trafford or if he wasn't willing to come to Old Trafford, then I think the deal would be dead 
We've heard reports that he's been speaking to Eric Ten Hag. He's had conversations with him. So it's obvious he's OK with the move because if he spoke to Eric Ten Hag and said, listen, I'm not going to sign for Manchester United come hell or high water, we would have walked away from it. We walked away from the, was it the Julian Timber one? We walked away from other deals in the past where players don't want to come and you know they don't want to come. So it doesn't matter whether the players, club wanted to sell them to Manchester United. If the player's not going to move, you can't make them move. That's happened for years. So... The fact that this is continuing, the talks are continuing and the rumours and the stories are continuing shows you there must be some sort of possibility of him coming there. So, yes, he's a, still a Barcelona player. He's think he's gone away on their tour as well. And obviously, when he's asked about it, he's saying he's happy at Barcelona. He's going to say that because if he doesn't, he's going to have the Barcelona fans turning against him. And he's going to look a bit silly if the move falls through because the wages issue can't be resolved. But on that front as well, this from the evening news, Per Sport says that United are ready to pay De Jong even more money to ensure he joins. It says the report in Sport, and I'm going to get to the actual report in a minute, claims that United are now in a position to raise the midfielder's salary. While there have been claims the Reds are willing to pay De Jong a wage of around 395 grand a week. De Jong is still owed money by Barcelona, which has been um, sort of holding up the move. Barcelona owe him around £70 million in deferred wages. He deferred some wages during COVID. That's money he's now owed and he wants. The issue being that Barcelona are refusing to give it him. They're thinking, OK, if he leaves, that's the matter settled. He's not going to walk away from £70 million. I don't blame him on that front. Some people may say, well, why not? You know, come to United, you're going to get paid a fat wedge, all that sort of stuff. But come on, I mean... I don't expect anyone, especially a footballer who, yes, he's earning a lot of money, but £70 million is still a lot of money to him. And Barcelona have got it. They've been spending money left, right and centre. And it's ridiculous to expect someone to walk away from £70 million quid when you've been throwing money at other players as well. What is it for Rafinha? What is it for Lewandowski? Come on, man. They've got that money. They owe it him. They've got to do the right thing. He's waiting for it. There could be a way of resolving this. And this is according to Sport out of um, Spain, sorry. Now, this has been put through uh, Google Translate, so the translation may not be perfect, but it says, um, sort of, basically, Manchester United is now in a position uh, about raising the salary, and, of course, um, and despite everything, negotiations can still happen, and uh, because now Manchester United are basically willing to pay him a little bit more money, could that be a way of unlocking this deal, of making that deal, the, the issue around wages, um, sort of go away? I mean, it, it, it remains to be seen, doesn't it? It's, it's difficult because it's saying here, from Barca, the issue is not considered closed. And in any case, if he wishes to continue, continue, sorry, his salary must be lowered or postponed again for the future. This is from the translation. So he's going to have to take lo lower wages to stay at Barcelona. Plus, you've got this issue, the, the deferred wages that still haven't been resolved. It seems like this is becoming a little bit more complex. But hopefully, United will to pay him a bit more money. Maybe as well, when you look at the fact that Manchester United did increase that bid. This with the extra wages, that could be some sort of way of getting around it. We'll have to wait and see. It's very difficult as well because you're getting conflict conflicting reports. He's still obviously a Barcelona player going on their tour, moving with them. I mean, it's far from settled, but there does seem to be a little bit of movement there. And this latest report about wages hopefully could lead to Frankie de Jong, especially when you look at the fact that Eric Ten Hag has told the board to continue with his transfer. That's the one he's always wanted from all the reports we've seen. As soon as we, uh, Eric Ten Hag arrived at Manchester United, it seemed like Frankie de Jong was the main target for him. So if that is the case, United are being told to pursue it, to keep going with it. Yes, you've got Miners, you've got Ericsson, you've got Tyrell Molassia, but that's, Frankie de Jong is the sort of the marquee signing, if you will, the key to that midfield, hopefully. We can get something done there sooner rather than later. Um, talking of midfield as well, James Garner, who has been here on the tour but hasn't played yet, is due to return to training on Monday, uh, according to James Ducker in the Telegraph, uh, after missing United's first two pre-season games with an injury he picked up on the first day of the tour. James Garner, of course, had that fantastic loan spell at Forest last season, got them promoted, he's come on the tour, he's had to watch the likes of Charlie Savage and Zidane Bell absolutely smash it when they've been given first-team opportunities on the tour so far. Might be a little bit frustrating for him because he's had an injury, he's not been able to play. However, his injury now has been... Um, healed he could be in the first team for the uh, upcoming game against Crystal Palace here in Melbourne on Tuesday he's certainly fit anyway and he's going to return to training we'll have to see how fit he is and whether he is ready for that game but it'd be good to see James Garner in the team as well and he's got you know well, might be a little bit of pressure on him because he's like you know he's one of those players who's played a lot of 
first team games, not for Manchester United, but obviously for Forest. He was at Forest one day last season as well, the season before. He's also at Watford. So he's got a few, you know, he's got a lot of experience for a youngster under his belt. He's seen some of these youngsters, these teenagers coming in and doing well. Now it's his time to, uh, to remind the United fans of what he can do. It'll be interesting to see what happens with James Garner. Is he going to play in Manchester United's first team next season? Is he going to be given a chance? Is he going to go out and loan again? He's had a few loan spells and done really well. Watford didn't quite work out, but he's obviously done well on the, twice, the two loan spells he had at Nottingham Forest. So could he come in? to Manchester United or could he go out on loan I'll be interested to see what happens uh, Harry Maguire as well has been doing uh, interviews quoted here by uh, James Ducker again talking about last season he says uh, last year was disappointing as an individual I didn't play well and as a team we didn't play well um, he's being quite honest there uh, talking about moving forward he said you're going to have to fight uh, you're going to have setbacks and last year was certainly a setback for myself on my career path but it's behind us now and we have to look forward to the future and getting this club back to winning trophies so he's obviously talking about that Luke Shaw also has been giving an interview to United's in-house media uh, he says we can't be satisfied anymore with how the team has been going it's not where the club should be and we know the levels uh, have to have had to take a mess sorry we know the levels have had to take a massive step in terms of higher intensity and what we're supposed to be doing. And I think from the start of the last two weeks, especially in training, it's definitely a big improvement. So Maguire and Shaw, I don't think had particularly good seasons last season, last season either of them. They seem to have a never-ending hangover from the Euros. They're talking a bit of a, you know, they're talking a good talk in terms of, you know, saying the positive things, saying the right things, being honest as well, which is good to see. But you've got to prove that on the football pitch, haven't you? Eric Ten Hag isn't going to care about what they've done in the past. He wants to see what they can do moving forward. So it'll be interesting to see how they get on this season, whether they can get to the levels that we've seen in the past for them. Because people almost forget that, especially with Harry Maguire. People say, oh, I've, I've seen, you know, people on social saying, oh, he's always been rubbish and all that sort of stuff. He hasn't. He had two good seasons for Manchester United, his first two seasons. Last season was a stinker. We've seen it with Luke Shaw as well. He has been uh, a bit up and down, shall we say, during his time at United. But there was a very good spell before the Euros and during the Euros, of course. So if he can get back to those levels, who knows? Both of them, though, have got players vying for their positions. Players who the manager's brought in. Tyrell Malassia can play in Luke Shaw's position and Lissandro Martinez can play in Harry, Harry Maguire's position. So there's a bit of pressure on him there because the manager's made these new signings and if you're not cutting, you're not, you're not performing to the levels he wants, he'll be happy to play his new signings instead of you. So lots to think about there from Manchester United point of view. We'll keep you posted on the Lissandro Martinez front. We'll keep you posted on the Frankie de Jong front as well. So make sure you are hitting like, share and subscribing to the channel. We've hit 650k, so I'm massively grateful for that. Thanks for all your support. Thanks to everyone here in Melbourne as well. We've had some great support, been chatting to some great fans. Great fans, it's been great to see as well. So big thanks to all them. Don't forget as well to check out all the other videos. The Jamie Jackson video, the Zidanic Ball interview with uh, Adam McCullough after the game uh, against Melbourne Victory as well. It's a great little chat there. You can see Adam McCullough like a, like a proud dad in here. Bless him. <laughs> That's such a great interview. Yeah, this has been the Paper Talk outside of quite cold Melbourne. And don't forget as well to go and check out Surfjack for all your VPN needs. Thanks for watching.